Hey, you guys. How are you guys doing? I know, girl, she's a mess. She is big. Are you guys ready for another chit chat? I hope you are, girl, because I have a lot to talk about. I have all my notes here in front of me. In this particular chit chat, I'm going to be detangling my hair um, and then washing my hair. Now, you guys, I'm hoping that I have enough energy tomorrow to do another hair related video. Um, and that's going to be the review of the eating because Eden Body Works um, Marshmallow Deep Conditioner. So I'm really excited about that. So y'all, let's just get right into it. Look, I've had a bit of a day. It's been a whirlwind of a day. To me, it feels like a Monday, but it's not. It's actually Wednesday. Um, so you know how we do. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. Baby, look, I had to pour me just a little bit of wine just because it's been, hmm, it's been a bit. Like I said, today feels like a Monday, but it's not. Um, JB has been talking to his friends back in Phoenix. That's the good thing about being a child in this century is that you're able to communicate with children thousands of miles away. So his little friend was actually called him early this morning. And I'm like, baby, JB's at school. You guys are two hours behind us or two hours. Yeah, two hours behind us. So we're two er two hours ahead of you. And he's, he's like, okay, he's my friend's grandbaby, actually. He's only seven years old, but JB doesn't care. He he just likes to talk to kids. So, how are you guys been doing? Happy New Year's. Happy 2023. Um, the weather is very crazy here in Texas, which I'm used to. <clears throat> my husband's complaining. I'm like, you were in Texas. Before we moved to Arizona, you were in Texas for dang on there 10 years. You know how it is it is what it is i think it was kind of raining this morning it is what it is um these kids are back at school from winter break amen <laughs> but like i stated before maybe i did um the luxury of having um a child in private school is that they can still go to school technically doing their breaks and so it's not educational it's just somebody watch basically coach their coach was watching them and child this coach this is not the coach we had when we were in school this coach was like when i went in there they were looking at avatar on netflix and eating marshmallows i'm like coach this coach don't have no kids he's just he's like the uncle put it like that he's really really sweet though and so he loves children so he's like the uncle so jb went there for about three days and they had a, he had a lot of fun at first he was like no but then once he went there he was good what else what else what else jb's birthday is next week um my baby is turning the double digits you guys he's turning 10 years old and so my parents are actually coming down this weekend to celebrate with us and then next week my husband and i are going to go to papa Do's. jb loves papa Do's. And I ordered him a nothing but cake um, for the school. The good thing about this school, too, is because this is a little school, it's a private school. I can bring, even if I wanted to, I can bring a homemade cake. You can't do that anymore for public schools or even charter schools. You can't bring anything homemade. Um, so she's allowing me to bring a cake up there. Um, but when my parents are here, I'm going to make a coconut cake for Jay because coconut cake is his favorite cake. Let me back up to my hair. My hair is very cottony, you guys. I have like a cottony texture um, sometimes when my hair is old. And baby, this is old. My hair is about about a month old. It is. This is an old blowout. So I'm going to lightly mist it with water. You never want to detangle your hair when it is dry. Technically, this is a dry detangle, but I'm adding moisture to it before really going in. Okay, if that makes sense. I'm actually going to add a little bit more water. And I'm adding something very simple, just coconut, swabs, coconut. And my hair is getting caught on this nail. So what I'm going to do is put a Band-Aid on it. Because I don't, it's almost like a hangnail. I've been shopping like crazy. Regardless of the holidays, when I tell you, they do bulk pickup in our neighborhood um, twice a month. We're in the city twice a month, right? I had at least, I'm not even joking, because it was Christmas stuff too, but seriously, I had at least 40 boxes in that back room, all different sizes, and I had accumulated 40 boxes in the course of like three weeks, um, so yeah, I purchased a dress that I shared with you guys on um, the community tab, 
I don't know if I like it, you guys. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now, I'm going to try it on and probably do a get ready with me video next week because we are going to pop it. I'm going to show you what it looks like, too. Then I purchased like this brown, cute, almost like a satchel purse. It has like a leather texture, but it looks cheap. It feels rich, but looks cheap. So I don't like that either. So I'm returning that one. But let me show y'all the dress. Maybe I really don't know why I do this to myself. Why I get stuff that's, that's, this is too, I don't know why I do this. I get stuff too large. And I'm also going to show y'all the coat that my husband got me for Christmas. This is too big for me. Um, I don't know why I do this. But this is the dress. <clears throat> it's high-low. So it comes up like this. And y'all, I'm so short. I am so little. <laughs> I am so little that this goes below my knee. This goes like to my ch my shins. And on the model, it went to her thighs. And this goes, look at this. Look. Look how. This looks like some little house in a Perry shit. I, I, let me show y'all the jacket. Isn't this beautiful? This is the beautiful jacket that my husband got me for Christmas. Now, baby, I had to pick it out. It's very heavy. Not very. It's heavy lining i love the maroon berry color i'm putting it on and again since your girl is, is little it goes almost to my ankles but it has pockets here oh what's in here girl a receipt i need to clean that out what is this isn't this nice y'all and it comes in different colors i would be linking this in the cards i mean in the um description box and i'll also link the um dress so yeah y'all it's new year new resolutions I don't so I don't set New Year resolutions. I create vision boards. I've been doing this for a while now. I'm a real big advocate for vision boards and manifesting, praying over what you want. I know that a lot of people don't believe in that, but that's probably why it doesn't work for you. Because if you don't believe in it, how it's gonna work. But at the end of the day, you guys, faith without works is nothing. You know what I mean? So you can do a vision board let's say you do a vision board and let's say you're not sure about it or you don't take any action so if i say if i put on my vision board i want my credit score to be 750 but i'm still racking up debt um opening up credit cards how do you expect for your credit score to be 750 that doesn't make any sense but if i say i want my credit score to be a 750 and I stop spending so much money on my credit cards, I save a little bit more, I work on lowering my debt, then that is going to get closer to my vision. Does that make sense? So I have a very simple vision board. <coughs> I'll share it here. And I put it everywhere. I'm not playing. I put it on my phones. I put it on my desktops, all my laptops. Um, and I look at it every day. I look at it. I think about it. And I think about what can I do to accomplish those particular goals so what else what else what else we're going to talk about a little bit what's going on in the world um i'm going to speak a little bit on this because i don't want to go into it because mental illness is so such a touchy and trigger for so many people which i completely understand um but i just want to say this when i saw some of the posts and it's been a while now since this happened regarding twitch when he passed away and there was this almost conspiracy oh my god they took him out he seemed so happy let me tell you something there are people that battle with mental illness and depression much longer than what you and i are aware of pete there the man was what was he 40 40 years old he probably knew at that time how to mask it there are people who are able to mask they're hurt. They're able to put on a face and go about their day. Not only that, but there was an older gentleman that shared something on, I believe it was Instagram. And he actually said that there are people who commit suicide that are totally at peace with their decisions. They would be happy, appear happy and be okay up until the moment that they actually commit suicide because they are at peace with that. A lot of people have problems with it, myself included. I'm not going to even, you know, say that I don't. But just because I have a problem with it doesn't mean that I don't try to be empathetic and try to understand where that person is coming from. 
that it kind of reminds me of that scene from what was that series you guys you know what i'm talking you know what i'm talking about with gabriel union and her friend actually committed suicide and she was okay with it she had this long history with her father molesting her as a as a child and um it was horrible but she wasn't sad she poured herself a glass of wine she smiled and she committed suicide i think that you know suicide and depression has no um we try to put it in a box and we try to say oh they weren't sad they weren't complaining they didn't seem upset they always seem happy they always were okay well you know there's a lot of people that are happy and matter of fact comedians if you think about the number of comedians that have had so many issues um, we're not even going to go down that list, but Jim Carrey is a big one. He hasn't came out and said, but Jim Carrey had a, a troubled childhood. Um, and I should say upbringing, not necessarily due to his parents, but upbringing in general. And they mask it by laughing. They mask it by making other people laugh, um, when they really want to cry at the end of the day. So that's all I want to say about that. Then we have the situation or I shouldn't even say situation, the death of Gangsta Boo, <clears throat> a.k.a. Lola from Memphis. She's from Memphis. Yeah, Memphis. Let me tell you something you guys want. There's not too many. Like I said, there's not too many deaths or celebrity deaths that, that rock me or I get surprised by. But this one, sh this one shook me a little bit. Not a little bit. This shook me a lot. I'm a, I'm a 90s kid. I graduated from high school in 98, went to UNT immediately after um like not even playing i went to unt when i was 17 years old i was still a baby and so with that being said three six mafia underground rap was it for me i i try to come off as classy on my channel but at the end of the day i have a side of me that is ratchet as hell it's so funny like <laughs> i used to make my friends um i used to make my friends I used to burn CDs from them, right? When CDs were really popular. And I would have all of this crazy 3-6 Mafia, UGK. Um, who else? Um, Pastor Choi, Trina, um, anybody from ATL, anybody from Atlanta, anybody from all those, anything you can think of. Uh, chopped up, screwed up music, UNLV. Anybody you can think I would have it all on the CD. And at the end, I would have a Karen Clark shirt. <laughs> At the end of the CD, I would have a Clark sister. So you listening to Nook if you book Crime Mob Ho. And then all of a sudden you hear Jesus is a love song. And so my friends was like, Vivian, you know, we were, you know, we up here getting crunk, and then all of a sudden we hear, I said, You gotta end it with Jesus. You have to end it with Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. So I was absolutely who did I see first who broke it? It's Willie. Um, what is this? I forgot. Willie D. He has a YouTube channel. He used to be in a rap group. And so he had a video premiering. Gangsta Boo passed away. That is absolutely so sad. So sad. She's 43 years old. She started off in, in 3-6 Mafia with, um, in 1990, no, was it 98? Was it 98? She was 16, basically, when she started rapping. And so, um, I, I'm getting old, you guys. There's no front man. I'm getting old because so many people, I was on Leia Gerdon's, um video, and she had did a video, I believe it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. There were so many comments from people that was like, I didn't know who she was, but I know who 36 Mafia. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting old. I knew Gangster. I listened to Where Them Dollars At. My favorite, I would have to say my favorite song would have to be um, The Blow. And she she was like went in on that track. So, meaning The Blow by Little John. Because there was a season where crunk mu music was it, right? Anyway, you guys. So, Gangsta Boo was found basically dead on her front porch. Her brother was still alive, barely. And they sent him to the hospital there's no word yet on what they passed away from. 
I will say this, Gangsta Boo and her husband were on marriage book camp and they were asked to leave because drugs were found in their room. Um, drugs is still a thing in that, in that industry. And it, it's hard to, to think about this, but you could be on, you could be taking cocaine and smoking weed and doing lean to a certain degree for years. But let me tell you something, the cocaine and what, the, what, and what used to be in the seventies and eighties, they are chopping that stuff. They're lacing it with fentanyl, with all of the BS so it's that it's cheaper for the for the supplier, you know, for the maker, excuse me. And so you're going to go in there and buy that stuff. You're playing Russian roulette. Again, don't know if that's what she passed away from. All I'm saying is that there's so many people, celebrities regardless, who are passing away either from pills that are laced with something or drugs in general that are laced with something and they don't know. That's why I stick to my wine. And an edible, which is legal. I am not. He could even pass away from this stuff, though. But it's just absolutely horrible. So prayers to her. So prayers to her and her family. It's really, really sad. So you guys, enough of that. Let's just go ahead and switch this up to, to what I'm watching on YouTube. Girl, not a lot. I went back, actually, and started to look for people who I used to watch um, and see what's going on. <sighs> I get that life can be busy, especially now, but I I feel a certain type of way when people are like, I'm back, I'm back, and then they don't post for another, another three to four months. I'm like, you're not back. You're not. Um, And I still feel like there are certain YouTubers that you wonder what's going on, but as as I stated earlier, we don't know what people are going through, you guys. People are losing loved ones. We're still in a pandemic, okay? Let that be known. Um, so you don't know. So what am I saying? I looked up Shari J to see what she's doing. She hasn't posted in a while. And then there are certain people that have posted, but I'm not getting the notifications. Are y'all having that problem? I don't know who that was I was looking for. I was looking at, I'm like, what the heck? She had all these new, uh, what is going on? And then there are people that I check on every now and then just to see if they posted like African export. I know she ain't, she ain't posted, but for a while she was on Twitter. Um, she ain't posted, child. But it is what it is. Fran, um, Faye in the City is okay, seems. Um, just checking up on people to see how they're doing. I am friends with Linda Lynn on Facebook. And so I think she's, I think she's okay. You know what I mean? I think Linda's okay. I need to actually text her. So just keeping up and seeing what people are doing and, and what's going on. Not really watching a lot of YouTube. Honestly, you got you guys. Now I'm watching a lot of TV. Now I will say there is something that I am watching on YouTube via All Black, and it's called, I had it here, I thought, uh, Tara. Y'all, I'm so sorry. It's basically a series on All Black, and it was really good. At, oh, Tara Lake Drive. I watched like the first seven or eight episodes. It was really not what I expected. I love a twist. I really, really do like that. I love a twist. Now, when it comes to Netflix, Hula Girl, I've been watching a lot, actually. I don't know why, but I've been watching a lot. I'm upset with Netflix. Why is that Netflix... <sighs> Why does Netflix do this where they're like, oh, well, unfortunately, this show is great. We got great writers. We got great character production. We got great chemistry with everybody. Ain't nobody sleeping with each other. Um, but we're not going to renew the season. So $18.99, the series that I was telling you about that started that fine as Jonas, middle Jonas from Dark. Um, and then the actual um, young man that played in The Rain, which is another great. I think it's Danish. Is The Rain Danish or German? I'm not sure. They decided not to up. They decided not to do a season two, just to renew a season two. And I'm like, this was a. I'm not gonna tell you what it is if you still want to watch it. It's called 18.99. It is not what you expect. I absolutely love it. I love the character development. I like the twist and turns. And I when it came to the season finale, I was really looking for it. To season two but it ain't gonna happen apparently i saw a movie on netflix called side effects that had old boy 
taste for myself with Jude Law. And the uh, actress that played in um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She is a phenomenal actress, you guys. I absolutely love her. She's great. We, oh, and also it stars Catherine Zeta-Jones. You guys, Catherine Zeta-Jones to me is the epitome of grace and beauty. I actually follow her on Instagram too. She is the epitome of grace and beauty. She's absolutely stunning to me. It's not what you expect, girl. It is not what you expect. And it basically surrounds a patient and her psychiatrist, both Catherine Zeta-Jones and Jude Law, and she takes a medication and unfortunately has a side effect that ends up very deadly. Very, very good. Cause side effects on Netflix. Another thing I saw was The Invitation. Now, girl, I'm trying to remember what that was about. I remember now. The Invitation um, has a biracial girl living in the U.S. And she comes to find out that she has relatives that are still alive and i don't know if it was the uk or girl basically it's overseas and they want her to come up they want to meet her like oh my god you know stuff starts happening in the um in the movie and i'm like oh my god the whole place is haunted and they're gonna use her as a sacrifice girl that's not what happened <laughs> yeah i'm one of those people that try to guess what it is halfway through then i stop and i google okay let me see something what's going on mm -mm. not what it is it could have i felt like it was rushed a little bit towards the end but again still good still good again called the invitation let's see um the best man the last whatever child i'm trying to watch it on the final series oh, i'm hearing so many great things about it and it's on peacock by the way which has a free and then like four ninety nine. dollars the very first episode is free I'm trying to watch it, but literally every minute or every 30 seconds, it's lagging. And I can't do that. And I honestly, at this point, I'm paying for like one, two, three, four. I'm paying for four subscriptions. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not, yeah, because I'm paying for Hulu, Netflix, Sling, All Black. Charlie, maybe something else. I'm not paying for another one. I'm not doing it. So at this point, it's a no. I haven't seen Best Man Last Holiday. Um, I tried to watch Glass Onion, you guys. I know it's gotten some good reviews. And it has so many great people in it with Ed Edward Norton and Daniel Craig. And look, when I was watching it, and then Daniel Craig has his accent. And I'm like, wait a minute, Daniel Craig... <laughs> has his heavy southern accent but there was a point in the middle where he, he either yelled or something and jb and i looked at each other and i was like his accent came through and jb's like yeah mama he sounds like peppa pig's daddy i said baby <laughs> Peppa's big daddy anyway it's too for me it's too much it's almost like a circus with the characters it's too exaggerated and i just I tried, like I, I really did. I tried to rewatch it at least three times and I just can't, y'all, I, I can't do it. And I'm all for a mystery. And I mean, especially when I saw the painting, I'm like, oh my God, what is he doing with that painting? But I was like, it's just, so it's a no, I'm not gonna watch it. I can't do it, I can't do it. I rewatch Basic Instinct. It hits differently when you groan. Uh, again, I haven't seen Basic Instinct since I've had a, a child and hit 40. Like, seriously. So, when I was younger and I saw it, I was just like, oh, my God. You know, now when I'm watching, I'm like, girl, yes, you better do that, Sharon Stone. Come on. Come on, Roxy. <laughs> Roxy was her lesbian lover. <laughs> no, I'm not shocked, even though it's been, you know, almost like, 10 years it has been 10 years probably more longer than that more like 15 years since i've watched basic instinct but i was like yes come on what's what is the problem why why are we so upset about things what's the problem um i rewatch good fences when i tell you viola davis is a phenomenal actress she is absolutely I hate that it took her so long to get her recognition, but I don't because I'm a firm believer that everything has a divine purpose. I really do. I really do believe that. She is just 
absolutely amazing in this this movie. And so at the end of the movie, well, we, if you've seen it, you know what it's about. It has um, Viola Davis, Denzel Washington. And actually, Denzel Washington was in the play version of it. It's a great book, too. I need to read the book because I heard it's a great book. But Denzel Washington plays this stereotypical <sighs> pattern of men that drink, has this job, complain about wanting to do better, but then they want to blame other people for their shortcomings. I'm just saying it how it is. Um, he ends up having an affair and having the baby is um, having a baby with another woman. So he asked her, oh, oh, the phone rings and it's the hospital that says that his mistress has had the baby. In the same breath, the mistress has died. So Viola was like, okay, so, you know, who's going to, you know, worry about, about bearing her? He said, she got a family, you know, she, child. Within 24 hours, he comes back with this baby. And then he says, he's holding, look, this is the baby. My bonnet is the baby. He's like, look, I know I know, I did wrong, but this baby, she's mine. She's mine. It's not her fault what I've done. So all I'm asking you is I, I, I need for your help. At the end, she ends up doing it because she's a good woman. And so she says, this baby has a mother, but you don't have a wife. Remember that? And so that got me to thinking, and I know that this was very common back in the day. And it got me to thinking, like, even if it was back in the day, with every, what, I, what would you be able to bear in a marriage? Could you handle your significant other not only cheating but impregnating another woman and then you knowing about it, not necessarily having to take care of that baby, but knowing about it and, and doing what you can for that baby. Now, I'm going to say this, and I don't care who watches it because I'm not going to give any names. I actually know someone whose husband, and they are older, they ain't no spring chickens. Her husband ended up having a baby on her. And I think now the baby is, is probably four or five years old. And I thought the baby was her grandchild. Child, I, let me tell you something right now. You can do whatever you want, but you better make sure that you use protection because not only are you are endangering yourself, you are endangering me in my womb. Everything that you are doing with her, you bringing it back to me. Not only are you doing, I don't think people understand the dangers of having unprotected sex like that. You are creating a soul tie. And then you are creating whatever issues that that woman is having and putting that into my womb. I'm, I hate to go there, go that deep, but basically it, it is. So not only is it physically nasty and, and unnatural, but spiritually it is. I wouldn't be able to do it. Absolutely not. I would not be able to do it. So, girl, anyway, I, just, I say all that to say I saw Good Fences. <laughs> Dang, did <Vivian. laughs> I watched Good Fences again. Um, we watched a show on Netflix with Ludacris and uh, Queen Latifah, which was put on by Edmund's babyface wife uh, produces movie. It's called End of the Road. Very good. Look, I love me a great oh my God, mystery, running away from people type of movie. Um, a movie that lasts over the span of two or three days and you got to run away from these people. End of the Road with Queen Latifah and Ludacris. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So you guys, some movies that I am looking forward to in general that are coming out. Megan, girl. <laughs> I shared the clip of Megan on Instagram a couple of, uh, actually, actually a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure if it's out already or not, but Megan is basically about this AI doll. Baby, it is um, Chucky in a form of American doll. She's like, hi, my name is, my name is Megan. Megan is dancing. She's dancing before she kill your ass. So she giving you a show before she take you out. 
<laughs> Megan is dancing and she's going to kill you. So I, I can't wait for it. Black phone, I think, was already out. I want to see that. I'll probably have to purchase it on YouTube. I don't mind doing it. And then JV and I are really excited. Y'all, I'm, I'm a kid at heart. We are very excited for the Super Mario movies. The Super Mario Brother movie that's coming out. We're going to go to one of those great eat and dine type of uh, theaters where you can lean back, order me a drink. JB can order him something. They have one here in Rockwell, which is just like 15 minutes away from us. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see that. So, you guys, that is it. Uh, I should say this. You know, I'm, I'm one of those uh, super superstitious people. So, death, death comes in threes. That's what we say. So, I forgot to mention it. Not only was it Gangsta Boo, but the Pope passed away and Barbara Walters passed away. Death comes in threes. Really sad. Really, really, really sad. Really, really sad thing for that. So, you guys, please be safe. Remember to um, pray over yourself. Pray over your, pray for your enemies. I really do believe in that. Pray for your enemies. Pray over your family. Pray over the people that did you wrong. Pray that you can get any type of bitterness out of your heart. Because not only will that make you... Um, almost block you from your blessings you get more wrinkles i mean seriously but pray over any unforgiveness bitterness and if you're not aware of that if you're not sure where it's at ask god to um uh to reveal those things to you okay so that's it you guys uh thank you so much for watching and thank you as always so all of my subscribers take care bye